So today's Dharma talk is going to be a little different. Uh, it's kind of an a update about a few things uh, involving uh, the Sangha. Uh, I'm going to talk about the temporary closure of our building. Uh, I'm going to talk about our online presence, our response to coronavirus, and the status of our building project. And I think it's just uh, important to keep everyone apprised of these things. We send out uh, email updates sometimes or newsletters. Not everyone sees those things. And I think I can give you a fuller picture in a Dharma talk. So um, this update uh, has been a little delayed. Uh, I had planned to address these things in my last Dharma talk, which was on uh, May 31st. But then a series of events happened. George Floyd was killed by the police and there were buildings burning throughout the cities. And uh, it was clear that I needed to talk just about that uh, on that day. Um, and I do want to acknowledge the continuing uh, suffering connected to uh, George Floyd's death and uh, subsequent events. This suffering has been wide and deep uh, on the part of uh, his family and his community, uh, people of color in the Twin Cities and uh, throughout the world, um, all of us. There's the deep suffering uh, that comes from systemic racism. I see the suffering of uh, people of color within our Sangha. Uh, I'm moved by the activism of the people in our Sangha. And uh, it remains to be seen whether these events will lead to a deep and lasting change. And I'm very hopeful that this will not be just one more instance of uh, a black man being shot by the police, that something uh, different will happen here uh, that will continue this discussion at all levels of our uh, society. And I think there's a great opportunity here. I really think there's a great opportunity for this country to face its past and face the future as well. And this has been hard on uh, all of us as uh, individuals too. Uh, we're going to need to continue to support each other. It's still very raw, I think, and things are still unfolding. Uh, within our Sangha, we had a couple of meetings, a couple of council process type meetings on uh, Zoom. Uh, and I think those were helpful. Uh, please remember that uh, the teachers are here and they're available and uh, would be happy to talk to you one on one uh, if you would find that supportive. Um, please remember that there's a tab on our website called Beyond Our Walls. And if you go there, you can learn about the Social Justice Dialogue and Response Group. Um, you'll be seeing a report soon from our Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Accessibility Committee uh, that will be relevant to these uh, matters as well. So another thing I'd like to talk about is the temporary closure of our building. And uh, as more things begin to open up around us, it's natural to wonder how that's going to affect uh, Zen Center, uh, when and how it's going to reopen. Uh, the short answer is we don't know and it's not time yet. Uh, and uh, I have to acknowledge that there's a lot of uncertainty in the world right now with the economy and the pandemic and other things. We have to be flexible. Things could change quickly. Um, and I'll talk more about the specifics of reopening later, but first I'd like to share the ideal scenario with you. And we don't know if it's going to happen or how or when. Um, we don't know any of this for sure, I'm afraid. It's just that's the kind of world we're in right now. Uh, but the ideal scenario is that we start construction on our building soon, uh, and then the questions about reopening will be moot because we'll be closed anyway. And the construction period will coincide with the period of closure during 
uh, coronavirus, and that will be really good timing if we can manage to make that happen. So as you know, if you've been around for a bit, uh, and you may have heard this many times, a lot of people have been working hard on planning this construction project for several years now. And the Capital Campaign Committee raised $578,000, uh, thanks to the great generosity of the Sangha. And I can never thank the Sangha enough for its uh, generosity. Uh, the Building Committee has planned the project with the help of our architect and our contractor. The board has overseen the process. Hundreds of hours of meetings involving dozens of people have gone into this. Uh, and we hope that it'll, it will happen soon. And so I just want to tell you where the project is at now, what the impediments and uncertainties are, and what our hopes are. And first a reminder of why we're doing this. Um, I know many of you are quite familiar with this, but please be patient uh, because I know some of you are new. Uh, there's a threefold reason for doing the construction, stewardship, growth, and accessibility. Uh, stewardship has to do with taking care of our very old building, uh, which was built, I think, around uh, 1900. Um, taking care of the, uh, the stucco, uh, which needs to be replaced and has lead in it, which is not a good thing, especially since we're right next to Lake, uh, uh, or I should say, right next to Bidet Makaska. Uh, we need uh, to replace some windows. Both of these things would be very helpful for the environment. So we want to be good neighbors to our neighbors and good neighbors to the lake. And then the second reason is growth. People keep coming and wanting to do this practice with us. And we expect that this trend will continue once we've reopened. Uh, we're not missionaries. We don't go out and look for people to join us. We don't grow for the sake of growth. But when they show up and they want to learn this practice, we want to be in a position to uh, respond. And our building uh, was really quite, uh, quite crowded. And then finally is accessibility, making it easier to get into the building and get around in the building. Right now, it's pretty much impossible to get a wheelchair into the building. Uh, the front steps are, are very uh, awkward um, and uh, we don't have handicap accessible bathrooms. So we would like to fix all of those things. Uh, and the big news is that we have a new plan. Uh, it kind of suddenly, there's just an evolution of many plans, many, many concerns. And we finally got to the point where it dawned on the architect uh, that there was a better, more simple, uh, elegant approach that is less disruptive than what we first proposed. And the original plan, which many of you saw, uh, and I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to describe this without diagrams and things, but this will just have to do today. Uh, the original plan was to remove the interior stairway and take out a wall in order to expand the zendo and then build a stairway onto the back of the building and add two bathrooms uh, back there near uh, the stairway. The new plan is to build a zendo, to add a zendo onto the north side of the building. So on the north side of the building, we have uh, the bamboo porch, that porch where we store our chairs, and underneath that is the garage. And the idea is to tear off the bamboo porch and the garage and build a zendo there. So it would be a big, simple, rectangular room overlooking the lake, hopefully with plenty of windows for good ventilation. Uh, and this zendo would be I think uh, it would be over 700 square feet. Our current Zendo is somewhere between four and 500 square feet. So it would be uh, significantly uh, larger. And then we would enter that Zendo from the north end of the porch. The front porch would not change. It would just have a doorway at the north end so we could enter the Zendo. And there would be an exit at the back of the Zendo. And then the current Zendo uh, would undergo some change. We would still be able to use it, but it would undergo some change in that we would locate the handicap accessible bathrooms 
in what is now the uh, east end of the zendo. So that is to the left of the altar. There would be two bathrooms there, uh, which you would enter from uh, the hallway. Uh, so what is now the zendo would become smaller. We could still, I think we could keep the altar and the space would feel pretty similar, but it would be smaller. And we could do our intro in there and we could have smaller ceremonies in there and it would still be, uh, uh, we would still be honoring that space that we have used for so many years. And then if you're still with me, the, um, what is now the uh, Buddha hall would become kind of a multi-use room and we could put doors, big doors on each end of it so that if we open the doors toward what is now the Zendo, what will become the Buddha hall, we can expand that space. If we open the doors on the other side, um, then it'll be additional seating for the new Zendo. So I don't know, are you still with me? Um, <laughs> you can direct questions to me later and I can you know, uh, try, to, try to clear this up if it's confusing. And then that um, uh, what is now the Buddha hall would become the staging area for our Oryoki meals during retreats. So I think that's a pretty cool uh, plan. Um, the um, entrance to the front porch would be changed. It's really awkward the way you have to go up the steps now and while standing on the steps, open the door. We would put some kind of a stoop there so it's just easier uh, to enter. Um, the second and third floors would be unchanged. Uh, the apartment would stay for now. And there would be a new basement area under the Zendo. So that would be quite a lot of additional space that we could use for various things. Uh, stucco would be replaced, windows would be replaced. We would do landscaping outdoors, um, uh, make the back entrance a little less awkward and a little more, um, a little more easy to use. And it's a beautiful plan. It's a beautiful plan, I think. Uh, and uh, uh, I've, I've told some people about it uh, who seem quite excited about it. And of course, I always have to include this caveat. Uh, things may continue develop, to develop as they have so far. Uh, as we get into the plans, we may you know, have to alter things here and there. And we've said that all along. But I imagine us in this new Zendo with room for more people, larger ceremonies, really good sight lines, really good uh, sound, and it's nice to imagine. Now, what are the impediments? There are two big ones, really, and uh, they both are complex, and they're both related to some extent, uh, uh, to some extent with the, uh, the pandemic. Um, they're both related to the uncertainty resulting from that. And the first is about parking. So the city of Minneapolis has a rule that if you're a church and you expand your main assembly area, you have to add additional parking spaces. And that is um, uh, uh, not good for us because in order to comply with that rule, we would have to add parking spaces uh, in our backyard uh, to the east of our existing driveway and stuff. And we'd have to tear up a big chunk of the backyard and the walking path would be ruined and we'd have to take out a lot of uh, plants and things. No one wants to do that, uh, that I've talked to because our grounds are so lovely. And it's been clear from our discussions for years that people just really value uh, our outdoor uh, setting. So what we're doing is we're asking the city for some kind of a waiver from that uh, requirement. And we're pretty confident that we can get that. The uh, ECHO board, the local neighborhood association, they're on our side. Parking's not a problem in our neighborhood. I don't think anybody wants to see a big parking lot right next to the lake. Um, and so, uh, but the city is really busy, of course, uh, with um, coronavirus and all the things that arose from the killing of George Floyd and the aftermath questions of police reform. 
uh, we understand that and we've been patient. I mean, they are incredibly busy. But at the same time, the stakes are very high for us in this thing. So we're keeping after them uh, politely and steadily, very, very steadily. And if we could get a waiver soon, uh, we could start construction maybe in August and maybe have it largely done by winter while we're closed anyway. And we could just continue our Zoom presence, uh, which is uh, working uh, very well, I think. Um, we could consider also uh, getting a temporary physical location if we want to practice uh, together. Um, the other pediment is uh, financial. Uh, I think it's uh, surmountable, but it's a challenge. Since So we didn't get quite all the way to our goal. We got to 80% of our goal, and that was wonderful. But in order to do this, we're going to need to, I think, uh, borrow some money and or use some more of our reserves to make the project happen. And it's a bit of a leap to do this during uncertain times. It'll be the board's decision. I think we can manage it. Um, with only one exception, no one has withdrawn their pledge due to economic uncertainty, which is really great. Uh, and we've collected a pretty large percentage of the pledges that have been made. And I think we can do this thing if we just get that waiver. We've put so much into this and I think the time is now. Um, and that'll be good and I hope it happens. And um, I hope it happens soon. Um, and I think recent events have put all of this into perspective. You know, I've always said this project is really not about the building, it's about the Sangha. And now I really know it's not about the building because our building is closed and yet our Sangha is strong. I think in some ways our Sangha may be as strong as it's ever been, even though we don't have a building. So it's not about the building. It's not something we need to be attached to. Uh, it's not something that simply has to happen to make us happy, but it's still important to care for the building and caring for it will help us. It'll help future generations prepare to meet any challenges that will come up. So I think we'll put our hearts into this building uh, because we love people. We love the people who show up. We love the earth. We love each other. This building is one part of the great web of resources we have to share the Dharma and take care of each other and do what needs to be done in the world. So I'm very, very uh, optimistic about that situation. So um, also, I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about um, uh, reopening. Uh, and I just would like to tell you what's on my mind about that in all of its complexity. Because there is a lot to uh, consider. Uh, as I said, the question may become moot, uh, but it may not. If our construction project has to be delayed, it won't be moot. Uh, so I need to address this. And we've been, I've been getting a few inquiries about reopening. Um, and I've been telling people the short answer is we don't know. It's too early to reopen. It's too early to set a date for reopening. Uh, we're going to continue to do a lot of listening and a lot of planning. And there is a big team of people working on various aspects of this question. Uh, it's a decision I take very seriously. There is our need to get together as a Sangha, which is a really deep need. And also there's the fact that there's the very real danger of spreading the virus. And we have a lot of vulnerable people in our Sangha. And I know at some point you accept some level of danger and you open up. You can't wait for zero danger. Uh, but what is that point? Everybody has a different opinion about that. Uh, my hope is that for us as a group, it'll become apparent at some point uh, when the proper time is 
and that it'll be something that we can all accept. Um, I know that there are a lot of different opinions out there, but I also know there is a lot of respect for opinions of others. And also as Buddhists, a lot of respect uh, for the things that we don't know. And one thing I'm really happy about is that we've done a really good job of staying together as a Sangha. I mean, here we are. We're here in these little boxes. It's not quite the same, but it's us. It's us. It's our dear, beloved Sangha here. And uh, we've moved almost all of our programming online and it's working very well. Our uh, events are well attended. It's surprising how much support you can feel, how much closeness, closeness you can feel, I think, from looking into these little boxes in our computer. It's so nice after morning meditation to uh, take a few minutes to say hi to everyone and say, okay, what are you doing with your day? It's very, it's very sweet. And so uh, many people have expressed uh, appreciation for the Sangha at this time. Uh, one person said to me, you know, I never felt closer to the Sangha or more supported by the Sangha than I do uh, right now. And we also have new folks coming in, some from a distance. We have folks who have moved away who are now able to come back to the Sangha. One person I know from California, very active member here, uh, moved away about four years ago and pretty much ended his relationship with our Sangha, but now he's back. He can participate at the same level as anyone else. Uh, and this morning, you know, we have our morning uh, doans when we do our sittings. One of our morning doans was uh, in uh, Pittsburgh and another was in uh, Cleveland. That was pretty nice. These are both loyal Sangha members at a distance. So Zoom works pretty well and it's even um, brought some new uh, opportunities, uh, but I still understand the need to reopen uh, for having a social time and all of that. And I know that there are some folks who are not participating on Zoom. Uh, they may uh, lack the technology or they may not be comfortable with Zoom or it may just be their preference. And they say, well, I'm gonna wait until we get back together. So when and how do we do this? How do we decide? How do we even approach this decision? Well, one thing we often ask is what are other centers doing? What are other places doing? Um, so we have SZBA, the Soto Zen Buddhist Association, and they had a meeting, I think it was over uh, two weeks ago, and one of our priests attended. And this was a meeting about uh, reopening and there were over 24 people in attendance. And I think, so probably representing about 20 different Zen centers and only two or three were planning to reopen anytime soon. And about half of the Zen centers said they're not considering reopening until May of 2021, which is a long time from now. And that date, that is in accordance with some guidelines developed by the Unitarian Universalist Association, which a lot of people have found uh, helpful. One person said that they had set a firm date quite far in the future so that they wouldn't expend endless energy discussing uh, the matter. Uh, another, a meeting I went to, it was a conference call a while back, uh, the Department of Public Safety headed by John Harrington, to his credit, he wanted some feedback from Buddhists and Muslims about reopening so that they could consider these communities when they institute the state uh, guidelines. Uh, so um, the call was probably half a dozen Buddhists and half a dozen uh, Imams. And again, this is a while back, uh, so it may have changed, but at that time, uh, no one was considering reopening. Uh, and the general view I thought was that we're being uh, responsible to society uh, by being slow and careful with respect to reopening. So there is that feeling that it's just social, socially responsible for uh, places of, 
of worship, churches, Zen centers to take the lead in uh, just urging caution, slowness, care. So we're watching what other folks are doing. And another thing, and this is probably the biggest thing, a necessary prerequisite for any kind of reopening uh, is, uh, will we have the necessary volunteers uh, to do it? And I thought that's a pretty good question. So I asked people, I sent out a poll to all of the priests and 12 selected volunteers, I think it was. So that's about 23 Sangha leaders and most of them replied in depth. And uh, the tone was reassuring. Um, I'm afraid I had this idea that people might be a little grumpy about this, but they weren't. Uh, I have to admit uh, that there are moments when I'm feeling a little, uh, a little pressure about this, you know, but I think a lot of that pressure is in my imagination. Everyone was really kind and really supportive and they just seriously want to do what's best for everyone and our understanding of other people's attitudes. And there were a lot of different positions and a few folks are open to a limited reopening right now. Uh, some folks are open to say, uh, doing morning meditation in the backyard right now. Uh, but there were two uh, major trends, uh, or maybe I should say two answers to questions. Uh, one was that a number of people said it didn't seem safe or responsible to reopen while hospitalizations were going up uh, and uh, infections seemed to be still going up uh, or at best uh, plateauing. And uh, so as not to mince words, I need to point out that uh, uh, there are a lot of people who think that reopening is not just not a good idea, they think it's a terrible, terrible, bad, awful idea. Need to, be, need to be fair to that point of view. So this was a while back and things have changed. The number of deaths and hospitalizations in Minnesota is going down. So I think I need to ask this question again uh, pretty soon and see if attitudes have changed. And then I asked, would you come back if we had a phased reopening uh, beginning soon? Would you come back? Would you want to do your volunteer job? And many people, I would say most, uh, were very hesitant to come back at that time. Some are vulnerable due to age. Some have underlying conditions. Some are just uh, cautious. Some just think it's a good signal to send to the community. So we rely on our volunteers to make things happen here. Uh, if the people we need to do the work to support the practice are not ready to come in, we can't do it. And as a general principle, I believe no one should ever feel pressured to come back to Zen Center to serve in a volunteer role if they're not comfortable doing so. All the programming will have to be supported by people who want to be there in the building. And I include myself among the people who are not ready to come back at this time. Uh, my wife and I are both over 65 and she has an underlying health condition. And if she were to catch uh, coronavirus, it could be fatal. I cannot bring it home to her. Uh, so it may be that when Zen Center finally does reopen, I'll still be participating for a while uh, through Zoom. And it will be sad if I can't be there physically, but that's the way it'll have to be. And so when we do reopen, we'll have some people who will come and some who will not. This will lead to kind of an odd division in the Sangha. Some people are there, some people are not. And it will lead to a lot of uh, technical issues as well, which we're thinking about and planning for. We have a committee uh, working on this. Uh, how can you serve people who are in the Zendo and people who are at home uh, simultaneously? How do you do a practice period incorporating both groups? Can you do that? Can you have a camera in the Zendo during a retreat or is that too intrusive? If it, is, if it is too intrusive, do you provide parallel programming and do we have the personnel for that? So there will be great complexity in planning. Uh, there will be issues of uh, technical stuff, teacher availability, 
volunteer availability. Uh, the state has issued a 14 page document uh, for religious institutions, including developing protocols for using the building and posting them. Uh, so it, it's a complex situation. Um, and I know that we're learning more about which situations are dangerous. And there's a big difference between having morning meditation in the backyard and opening up the building. And I'm open-minded, uh, but even for morning meditation in the backyard, we'd have to have volunteers willing to enter the building and bring the stuff out. Um, and there's something to be said uh, for a clear, consistent message that we are closed. And I think that could be a pretty good message, uh, especially given the leadership gap uh, in the country. I'm a little distressed about how things are going in the country with response to the pandemic. Um, there was an editorial in yesterday's paper by David Brooks. Uh, there were a lot of things in that editorial I did not agree with, but there was one paragraph uh, which I thought was really good. He said, we are losing the fight against COVID-19. Our behavior doesn't have anything to do with the reality around us. We just got tired, so we're giving up. And I think that's true. I think that's true. I think it's true for a lot of people. Um, I'm not saying that's true of people who would like to reopen Zen Center now. I mean, that's certainly a very, that's a, a responsible uh, point of view. I'm thinking more of people who are crowding into the bars and not socially distancing in public. I find it distressing. Um, and I ask, you know, shouldn't we as Buddhists who are acutely aware of interdependence and of the effects of our actions on others and who follow the Bodhisattva ideal and who follow the principle of Kshanti, which is patience, shouldn't we take the lead in being socially responsible? And if we must err, shouldn't we err on the side of public safety? Now, again, it's true that cases are decreasing in Minnesota, and that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, but they're surging in other places. As we know, cases are increasing right now in 29 states, including uh, Wisconsin. And most experts have said there will be a second surge. I don't know if this is a second surge or if this is a continuation of the first surge. But I do think that there are a whole lot of people who are pretending that the whole thing is over, and it is not. So I'm urging patience. I get the impatience too. I'm glad we've got both. We need them to balance out. Uh, it's not wrong to be impatient, not wrong to express it or to disagree with me. I expect people in the Sangha to disagree with me. Uh, I expect to be challenged in my beliefs. And in fact, I rely upon the Sangha uh, to do that. So, uh, I know that the time will come uh, to reopen and um, I'll talk to our volunteers again and I'll keep listening. And I'd like to end my talk uh, by sharing a little bit of my perceptions as to how we're doing as, the, as a Sangha. Not about the building, not about construction or whether we'll reopen, but about our practice. And I talk to a lot of people and uh, certain themes have uh, come up again and again. One thing I know is how hard all of this has been. Two of the most difficult things of our lives have happened simultaneously here. Um, but the people I talk to are standing up in the moment, doing what they need to do. And I'm so inspired by the people I talk to. And I know it's not easy uh, if you're isolating alone for weeks at a time, if you're going out to your job or to a protest and not knowing if that's a safe thing to do, fearing for your health and safety, that of your relatives, the confinement, trying to keep a positive attitude, it's hard. And sometimes we falter, but we get up again. And my goodness, we're doing this thing. And I think maybe we've been 
preparing for this our whole lives. And I hear again and again that my practice really helps and Zen Center really helps. This community, the teaching, and the practice. And I think a lot of our long-term members feel this. And if you don't, well, if it's not there, it's not there. And that's how it is. But I think a lot of you do. And if you're new, uh, we invite you in. It's maybe not easy to connect with a new community remotely, but please give it a try. Uh, stick around after my talk and after the questions and answers and um, uh, join a breakout room. Say hi to a few folks. Uh, stick around after the morning meditation, which begins at 5.50 or 6.30 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Thursday, and say hi to everyone who's leaving meditation. Ask them uh, what they're going to do with their day, or come for evening meditation, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or Saturday morning meditation. And eventually, the time will come, you'll be able to come see us in person, and that will be a great day. And if you live far away, if you live on one of the coasts, well, maybe you can continue to see us on Zoom after we re reopen. And maybe you can come here a couple times a year. We welcome you in. And uh, for our long-term folks, I want to say that our practice and our years of devotion to this Sangha, to making it work, those years of generosity, all of that has prepared us as a community for this time. And it's encouraging, isn't it, that we can do this? Isn't it encouraging how we've dealt with this? Not only can we do this, you know, get through this personally with our focus and our compassion intact, but we can affect the people around us. We can have a profound effect on the people around us. So our actions, our courage, our devotion, all of that stuff really matters. So, so we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay in tough times. <laughs>